This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. EV fires are harder to put out than gas car fires, requiring a lot more water, thousands of gallons more in some cases. But LG Chem just published a scientific paper about a new material that it's developed to prevent thermal runaway in batteries. It's a thin composite material, only one micrometer, or one one hundredth the thickness of a human hair that's placed between the cathode layer and the current collector of a battery. It starts altering its molecular structure when the battery's temperature goes beyond its normal operating range, which drastically increases the material's resistance and cuts off the flow of current. LG says there's been other fire suppressing materials put inside of batteries before, but it claims those had issues with slow reaction times and reduced energy density. It says this new material can increase its electrical resistance by 5,000 ohms for every degree Celsius that the battery's temp goes over its normal range. In test, batteries with the material either didn't catch fire, or if they did, they went out quickly or would have likely prevented a full-blown thermal runaway event. LG has already completed safety tests for mobile devices, but says that EV safety tests will continue through next year. We're getting more sales reports from automakers in the U.S. market, and while we're still waiting for Ford and Tesla to report their numbers, September sales were pretty weak. But we did find some interesting tidbits in the numbers, especially when it comes to EV sales at General Motors. It sold over 32,000 EVs for the third quarter, up 60% from a year ago, and up 46% from the second quarter. All of GM's EVs sold well, with the Chevrolet Equinox topping the list with 9,772 sold. But guess what? Honda's Prologue, which is built by GM, did even better than that. Honda sold 12,644 Prologues in Q3. When you add up both of GM's and Honda's EV sales, GM built 44,839 EVs, which is getting close to the run rate that it promised that it would hit by the end of the year. GM said it would hit a run rate of 200,000 EVs a year by the end of December, and these numbers suggest that it's on its way to hitting that goal. But don't forget, those numbers are down significantly from its original EV projections. Global car sales are also pretty weak. Kia says it sold just under 250,000 vehicles in September, down 4.5% from last year. Volvo bucked the trend, but not by much. It sold 62,458 cars last month, up only 1%. In a possible sign of how weak the market is, especially in Europe, Tesla will be exhibiting at the Paris Auto Show at the end of the month for the first time in six years. It really doesn't have anything new to show off, but needs to attract more buyers. In August, its sales dropped 36%, and in July, BMW actually sold more EVs in Europe than Tesla did. Until it gets new models in the pipeline, Tesla may need to rely on old-fashioned auto shows to get more people to look at its cars. Bloomberg reports that the warning lights are flashing when it comes to subprime borrowers for auto loans. People with low credit scores are defaulting on car loans at a rate not seen since the end of the Great Recession. And that's causing stock prices to drop for loan companies like Ally and the Credit Acceptance Corporation. But that's because they dove into the subprime market while traditional lenders like banks did not. And when interest rates and car prices soared in 2022 and 2023, That made it a lot harder for any subprime borrower to make their car payment. Hopefully, now that interest rates are on the way down, we'll start to see fewer delinquencies. German automakers continue to voice their opposition to Europe's tariffs on Chinese-made EVs. EU countries are expected to vote on the tariffs this Friday, and BMW CEO Oliver Zipsa is calling on the German government to vote against them. BMW, along with Volkswagen and Mercedes, rely on China for sales and revenue, and they're concerned China could retaliate if the EU imposes the tariffs. And it looks like the automaker's lobbying has paid off, because Germany has signaled it will abstain instead of voting against the tariffs. And in order to stop the tariffs, 
a majority of EU members, 15 countries representing 65% of the EU's population, need to vote against it. But if the tariffs do pass, Chinese automaker Zhipeng is making plans to avoid them. A company executive told Bloomberg that it's considering several options to build vehicles in Europe, including contract manufacturing, working with existing plants, or opening a new one. Knowing that a little rain won't slow down your day, that's what really matters. Bridgestone Toronza Quiet Track Tires. Confident control in wet conditions. Ford is dropping the price for Blue Cruise, its hands-free driving system, as well as giving the option to buy it outright for the first time with a one-time fee. Previously, you could pay $2,100 for a three-year subscription, or $800 for a year, or spend $75 a month. But with eligible 2025 model year vehicles, buyers can get Blue Cruise with a one-time purchase of about $2,500, or subscribe to it for $500 a year instead of $800 or $50 a month instead of $75. Ford is also going to offer the one-year Blue Cruise subscription standard on some trims and optional on others. And even if you don't opt in, it will give you a free 90-day trial. The hands-free driving system is currently offered on the Explorer, Expedition, F-150, F-150 Lightning, and Mustang Mach-E. But why do you think Ford is making this move? It thought the price was too high, the take rate was too low, with more scale, it could lower the price, or maybe some combination of those. Let us know what you think in the comments. And speaking of Ford, we have an update on its plan to return to the Indian market. It stopped selling vehicles there in 2021 and ended production in 2022. But last month, reports came out that Ford held talks to fire one of its plants in India back up to export cars to other markets. And now an industry minister of the region where that plant is located hinted that the automaker could build electric cars in India. We wouldn't be surprised to see Ford's $25,000 Skunk Works EV getting built there and use that plant as a low-cost source to export EVs to other markets. And with the world's largest population of 1.4 billion people, India is likely to emerge as a massive car market. And that could be another reason why Ford wants to get back in. Renault is bringing video streaming into its vehicles. The automaker signed a deal with French TV provider Canal Plus to make its app available in connected vehicles from Renault so users can watch movies, TV shows, documentaries, sports, and more, either live or on demand. It will come installed on new models, or owners can download the app starting on Friday. The feature will first be available in France, Switzerland, and Poland. But for safety reasons, the app will only work while the vehicle is parked. Volkswagen's Skoda brand is launching a new, somewhat more affordable, MEB-based EV that's called the LROC. Fitting into the compact SUV class, it will be offered in rear or all-wheel drive with three battery sizes and a starting price around 33,000 euros. The smallest battery pack is 52 kilowatt hours and is paired with a 125 kilowatt or 167 horsepower electric motor, which combines to provide a range of over 370 kilometers or 230 miles. There's also a 59 kilowatt hour battery paired with a 150 kilowatt or 200 horsepower motor that combines for 400 kilometers or about 250 miles of range. The biggest battery is 77 kilowatt hours and can be paired with a 210 kilowatt or 280 horsepower electric motor or with that same motor and an additional motor on the front axle for all wheel drive. The rear drive version will have over 560 kilometers or roughly 350 miles of range. Skoda says the LROC will go on sale in Europe in the first quarter of next year. At the top of the show, we talked a lot about how the U.S. car market and even the global car market is weaker than expected. And we want to dig deeper into the details of that. And that's what we're going to do on tomorrow's AutoLine After Hours. Our guests will be the analyst and forecaster Warren Brown who has some of the best insights into the hows and whys and wherefores 
of what's going on in the wholesale and retail side of the business. But that's it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. And by ZF. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Hi, I'm Don Hatfield from Intrepid Control Systems, and I'm presenting the wireless BMS solution from Intrepid Control Systems. Uh, come and see us in this demo at booth 1201 at the Battery Show. And also, analog devices will be there as well. We'd be happy to talk to you and help you with your solution.